Um, hey, so, Meg. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'll cut out anything that we need to cut out, or maybe there's nothing that we'll have to cut out, and that would be great, too. Um, we, just, we just processed 30 gallons of milk. And 30? 30, 30 gallons. And yeah. spilled a uh, half a gallon. A half, <gasps> half a gallon, gallon of cream uh, yeah. on the floor. Oh. Yeah. So, oh, that that's painful. Yeah. Oh, it's like Homesteader's worst nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just had a, Adam had a moment and he was like, am I going to cry or am I not going to cry about this? <laughs> Well, we're not supposed to cry over spilt milk. I think spilt cream might be legit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> um, okay, so I just wrote just a couple notes here on my phone just so I'm, like, focused because I haven't eaten today and I'm, like, getting shaky and stuff. So, um, go eat something. No, I'm good. We're, I'm trying to try do to this, tell her. I know. I'm trying to do this fasting, intermittent fasting and just trying to go as long as I can go before eating every day. And we'll see. Uh, hi, Ben. <laughs> they say hi. <laughs> He's like, I'm not here. <laughs> hi. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to start it like we're starting our podcast and then we'll just, we'll just chat. So, but I can okay. hear you really cool. well now. So cool. All right. Well, we have Meg Holler today on the podcast and um, probably most of our listeners already know who Meg is, but um, do you want to kind of introduce yourself and, and what you do and that kind of thing? Okay. Um, well, like you said, I am Meg and my, my other half is on baby duty today, so he's not here, but <laughs> me and my husband, Ben, um, we have the YouTube channel, The Holler Homestead, and we just kind of vlog our life and what we're doing here on our homestead. We've been here for about two and a half years now. So we're kind of in the, the startup phase of just building and getting things done. Yeah. And y'all are doing an awesome job. Like, um, I, every time we're there, you've done something different. Adam's always in awe of what Ben's building or, or mm -hmm. <laughs> working on and stuff. So it's, it's fun, which brings us to the next thing I was going to say is that, um, we're we're in real life friends so that's pretty cool um yes that we and i guess i was trying to think how long ago it was with that that we met i think it was probably like three-ish years ago maybe um after homesteaders i think is that right yes <clears throat> okay because we came through while we were traveling so we hit homesteaders first and then came down here yeah so it's been so, three years yeah. God. Yeah, so you, um, yeah, you guys stopped by here even before you went to the mountains where you ended up landing and um, finding your home, which I guess, is it considered the foothills or the mountains? Do you know? Like what We're in the foothills, yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, so yeah, they're, they're kind of, they're a little bit closer to us than some of our other friends up there, and so that's nice. We get to stop by and see mm -hmm. them on our way up um, a lot, so that's cool. Um, but so we're doing this homesteading series for our podcast and just breaking it down. Like we've done one on what if one spouse is into the homesteading? What if one is not? So like, how do you deal with that? Um, we've done one on, um, like finances on the homestead, just like where to start, what animals to start with, that kind of thing. And so I thought, um, we would have you on as kind of just to talk about food because food, I think for most people is where the homesteading thing starts. Mm -hmm. um, so at least it did for us. I know I was having some health issues um, and I don't know what for you, like, what do you think really started it? I think it was food. Yeah. yeah. Just knowing where our food comes from and, you know knowing how bad some food is that you buy at the store. So, so. And we started with chickens. Like we yeah. started, well, we started raising chickens for eggs mm -hmm. and then we started, um, you know, having meat chickens and that kind right. of thing. But um, what about you guys? What was, what was your motivation to start this, this lifestyle? Cause I know y'all started back in California really with growing some things and stuff. So we did. Yes. Uh, this is my favorite <laughs> subject. I love food. <laughs> um, yeah, it was for us. Um, a lot of wanting to know where our food came from. I also had some health issues 
Um, after our twins were born, that's a whole long story, but after our twins were born, I was having some health issues and it just kind of started me slowly. You know, you kind of cut out the chemicals, you know, I, I got rid of the Clorox and the bleach and all that stuff. And it was like, okay, well, it's not just about the chemicals around you. It's what you're putting in your body too. And that really started me on a, a journey towards eventually wanting to grow my own food. And then for Ben, it was kind of the same thing. He was a little bit farther behind. You talked a minute ago about, you know, what if your spouse isn't on board? Yeah. And it's not that he wasn't on board, but he wasn't like quite there yet. Yeah. And so just slowly over time, as, as I changed our food, it was like, okay, well, yeah, we need to know more about what we're putting in our bodies and where our food is coming from. So that, that's kind of what started it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then once you start down that path, it's like, you can't go back. Right. We were talking about. <laughs> no, how, you can't. We yeah. still have these conversations. I, I told him the other day, I was like, when you know better, you know better. And yeah. you can't just like ignore it and right. go, you know, eat a McDonald's burger again. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's crazy, isn't it? Like we, we just do yeah, without. Yeah. Like if we don't have it or, or don't know where to find it, we just do without. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. That's, that's what we've been doing a lot lately too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Um, let's see. So then when I was talking to you about being on here, um, because you and I have had some conversations probably over the past six months, just about <laughs> food and the spiritual connection with food. Um, I think Joel Salatin did a great job of, of making that connection, um, in the marvelous pigness of pigs book. Uh, that was really kind of, I just recently read that Adam had read it years ago, but I just recently read that and already felt this and knew this, but reading that book just really, I was like, everyone needs to read this, you know, like everyone needs to know how, like how important this is. Um, Mm -hmm. And so (laughs) I know um, you were given a word of the year and what, what is your word that is kind of your theme for this year? Uh, my word is bread, which was kind of interesting because I, usually I pick a word like, oh, strength or perseverance or <laughs> calm. <laughs> this year is bread. I'm like, okay, that's a different word, but hey, it works. Yeah. So um, I love that because, I mean, well, I think about, you know, how Jesus is the bread of life. Like, I just, th- I just think about right. that. What, um, what, have you seen the Lord, like, show you anything so far this year around that word like anything that he's revealed to you that's made that even more meaningful or anything like that um actually it has been a very spiritual year um since last year i think for a lot of us a lot of things have changed since last year yeah um and i would say my faith has definitely been deepened in the past year especially um, just cause I've had to, like, you have to rely on, on trusting God and a lot of things that are going yeah. on in the world right now. Um, but yes, especially this year, there has been a lot of bread in a way I go to God more for sustenance now mm-hmm. and as my bread, I guess you could say, mm-hmm. um, rather than just relying on myself a lot. Cause I, I'm, I'm pretty independent and it's been a, a very humbling spiritual year so far (laughs) yeah yeah we we've been there too we still are there (laughs) a lot of days (laughs) aren't we all (laughs) yeah Yeah. um that's really good I I know my in my words usually the same way it's usually like um joy or peace or something like that and I mean always the Lord speaks to that in the year but this year, um, back in like December, I, I think was when I started thinking like food, food. Is, and I was like, I don't know if it's like actually food or if it's like taste, like taste and see that the Lord is good or what, but it, it was mm-hmm. something centered to uh, around food. And, um, and then, uh, I was, um, given some books or I was, I was told about reading some books and they were all about like the spiritual connection with food. And, and, um, and then I think I recommended this to you, right? Taste and see. By mm-hmm, yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. Um, so then we had read, or I had read this. Did you read it? Mm-mm, okay. Read yeah. 
um, which we love Margaret Feinberg because um, we read the Scouting the Divine, and this was my search for God in wine, wool, and wild honey. Have you read that one, Meg? No, I haven't. Okay. Um, this is really, like, I think this is what spurred us on to, like, keep sheep and mm -hmm. stuff like that because um, she was basically on a search for, I mean, kind of like she was in this book, she was on a search for, like, seeing all of these agricultural references in the Bible, if they were true, basically, like, you know, she wanted to see them in real life, and so, mm -hmm. um, you know, we have them on our wall over here, my sheep listen to my voice, I know them, and they follow me, John 10, 27, and um, that was one of the things, she went to a shepherd, and she said, I want to see this, like, I want to see if they will recognize her voice, and come to it, and you know, she was like waiting in anticipation and she was like, you know, I, I didn't want it to not be true. You know, I wanted to, believe it. And, <laughs> you know, and it was true. Like, you know, they did listen to her. They didn't listen to Margaret when she was visiting there. They didn't listen to anybody else but her, the shepherd's voice and stuff. And so just, just seeing scriptures come to life, um, around agriculture, around different, um, you know, mm -hmm. food things, was really has really been interesting and kind of a theme for us for sure yeah um and then you had you had sent me a book so thank you for that because I, I listened to that audio book um come and eat a celebration of love and grace around the everyday table by Bree McCoy and it was really good um I, I was thinking about listening to it again just because it was it was a lot to take in and it was really good it, it was yeah um what like what stood out to you about that, about that book? If I could. have a hard time. Well, it's kind of twofold. Um, I love to feed people. Like I love to feed people. It is my favorite thing to do is to have people in my home and to feed them. But at the same time, I get so anxious about it and nervous and freaked out that, you know, I'm not going to have enough food or they're not going to like my food or they're going to have an allergy and I'm going to like kill them or something. <laughs> and for that one, for me, it, it really just was the idea of just chill out. Like your job is to bring people to your table mm -hmm. and then let the Lord take it over from there. Right. Just offer the table and, um, not like have so much anxiety about it. And it was kind of eye opening for me of, in a way, it was almost disobedient to God by having so much anxiety about it and mm -hmm. to have so much fear wrapped up in it. Mm -hmm. And for that, for her to just be like, just chill out and just yeah. like, have people over and stop freaking out about it. It was like, oh, okay, I think I get it now. Yeah. Yeah. It's not about the elaborate five course meals. It's just about, you know, being around the table with, with people and building relationships and, um, yeah, because, you know, I mean, I've been a guest in your home and I would have never known that. Like, you know, <laughs> you were anxious or, I was terrified you know, that night. You know, I, like that's usually the thing. Your guests never know that. You know, it's it's always, in you, work, you, you work it up in your mind and it's not even true. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. yeah. When you guys came through, because I actually did a video. I don't know if you remember. I did a video after y'all left. Like I had recorded we didn't really film while y'all were here the first time y'all came here, but, um, but I had videoed when y'all were coming, like coming up the driveway and we didn't like, this was before your YouTube channel blew up. Like I didn't even really yeah. know who you guys were and y'all didn't know who we were, but we were just trying to make a relationship and, and, um, the baby, <laughs> there, of course the baby woke up right before this started. Of course. We knew yes. that would Um, but uh, I remember record like video and y'all coming up the driveway and saying, like, I really want to host people. I really want to, but I get so nervous about it. And I wasn't even like really, you know, I had not in my mind planned like to, to have this big meal or anything like that. And so while y'all, and I'm, I'm a nervous cook. Like if, if, if people are in the kitchen with me, 
like I'm like go go away because I can't oh I'm the same way <laughs> yeah I can't I can't talk to you while I'm cooking like I need quiet and I need to concentrate on what I'm doing and I'm not even like a recipe follower really which I don't think you are either like I, I think we just kind no. of throw things together and but I was so nervous when y'all came through here and I remember like throwing together some like quesadillas or something other I was like well, we have a chicken it was quesadillas <laughs> yeah, I remember I'm, we have a chicken in here so I'm gonna do something real quick but I was so nervous but I, so I totally understand that and you know and even you and I have talked recently just about the stress of we both have little little ones again and mm -hmm. just they're they're always needing you which is wonderful that's all that's a blessing but you know yes having to think about preparing food for many, many people, you know, just in your family, just your family, because we both have large families is, is stressful. I mean, it gets kind of stressful. So, mm -hmm. um, I think, I think it, it was a good reminder in that book, just like the blessing. And you told me this too. I remember in a, in a text recently, just a, such a blessing to have so many mouths to feed and, um, yeah. and, and just to count it as that. So, um, so yeah, that was really good. Um, let's see. Yeah. Cause one day you're going to miss it. Oh, I know. I say that all the time. Mm. I'm like, I'm going to miss uh, when I'm just cooking for us, you know, like mm. I'm yes. all those, all those kids and you know, just how good, I mean, your kids are good eaters too. I think like my kids are, they are. Good eaters. So like, I don't know. I, people struggle with that. I think, you know, there's a lot of parents that struggle with getting their kids to eat. And so it's really mm -hmm. a blessing that my kids do eat a lot. It's very expensive, but, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> it but it is a blessing. I actually had a moment in the kitchen the other day, you know, my <laughs> twins are 14 now. So we're looking at them getting ready to drive and right. <laughs> move out in a few years. And I had a moment in the kitchen, I was making dinner and I almost started crying. I was like, they're going to be gone and I don't get to feed them anymore. <laughs> Me. but I do enjoy my crew and I love feeding my family it, it's a blessing to be able to be to do this yes I agree and then you just start praying that like they don't move too far away so they can still come over yes. and eat with you and, <laughs> yes exactly um what uh, I don't want to look at my <laughs> I might have gone through everything I wanted to say initially um I was just thinking about all the dishes that we do for some reason. Cause it, I mean, it's a lot of work to cook every meal, you know, so it is, you know, you guys do a great job. Yeah. And, uh, it's just a lot. It, you know? it is a lot. It's a lot. Dishes, dishes are a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do your kids help with chores and stuff? Like, do they help with? Yes, they do. So we have, cause we've got the four boys. We do day crew and night crew. So day crew <laughs> handles all the breakfast and lunch dishes and then night crew washes up after dinner. So okay. I, I'm thankful I don't have to deal with that anymore. It gives yeah. me a minute to just like sit down and breathe, yeah. but I do all the cooking. <clears throat> I mean, the kids will jump in. They're old enough now that they can throw together a, a meal every now and then, but I like to cook. So yeah. Yeah. but I hate to do dishes. So. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What, um, what are your favorite, like, go-to meals? Like, what do y'all eat, like, consistently every week or every other week or whatever? Um, I do roast chicken a lot. I like that because it's so versatile. Like, we'll have it as roast chicken, and I have one of those roasters that I love. I just got it, like, last year, and it is the best thing ever, and I'm like, where have you been all my life? <laughs> <laughs> um, but so I'll throw in, in the bottom, I'll do, like, uh, potatoes and carrots and onions and then I'll throw two whole chickens on top of that and just roast those and so we'll usually eat one that night and then I have another one that I take the chicken and I toss in pasta or tacos or you know something else um that's I, I do that probably once a week and then I'll make stock from that and we'll use that in beans um soups I use it to cook rice and I, we're pretty simple I mean it's nothing super fancy um, I kind of have a rotation of like once a week we do a whole roast chicken, once a week we do pasta, once a week we do, you know, rice and beans kind of yeah. thing. So mm -hmm. it's, it's easier that way. And then yeah. when I get bored, I'll go through all my cookbooks and start picking out random meals. Yeah, that, that sounds pretty similar to what we do. We, we're very simple too with our meals and it's, mm -hmm. it usually, 
involve like a whole chicken that we mm -hmm. will use for several meals like that too or um we're really two about two whole chickens now at this point you know mm -hmm. <laughs> so um what okay, so now i'm gonna ask you something kind of personal um <laughs> what <laughs> if you because i know you are you're kind of introverted which is like which is funny because you sh this is your job as you share your life <laughs> on youtube but, but i know that you're kind of introverted like we are and um which is funny too but um so have you have you felt any because having hosted people in your home and you like to have friends over and that kind of thing do you do you ever feel any kind of like conviction like I need to be inviting people over that I don't even know or like, cause I know we've yes. done that before. So I didn't know if that was something that you have, have thought about or struggled with or anything like that. Yeah, we have. Um, I think particularly in the, in the past year, maybe it's because there's so many like lost and lonely people wandering around now in the past year. Um, but definitely, I think because <laughs> it's going to sound funny, but I think you know what I mean. It's like, it's like God meets you at the table mm -hmm. and it's such a good icebreaker mm -hmm. when food is involved because you have something to do with your hands. And you, so I, we have felt the, the call to, you know, host dinners more. And, and like you said, maybe people we don't even really know. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a scary place to be though. Cause it's it like, ah. When you get nervous, like you said, introverted, like super introverted, it's like, but I don't know anybody and I don't know this person or, you know, not that we've had too many opportunities lately, yeah. but, um, definitely that feeling of being called to do so. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever read or if I had talked to you about this before, but, um, there's a book called, um, the gospel comes with a house key and, um, What's I actually got about halfway through that book. I think. Okay. Rosaria <laughs> yeah. Butterfield. And, um, and I read that probably three or four years ago. And that's really when the Lord started pricking my heart about hospitality and, mm -hmm. um, you know, just, I know in that book she talks about, she, she gets up in the every morning and she puts a chicken in the crock pot. She, you know, gets her rice ready and all, all that kind of stuff. And basically she has very simple meals like rice, beans, chicken pretty much every day. And, um, and she just prepares it because she doesn't know who's going to join them for meals that day, which is like completely foreign to me. Like that just, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I mean, I've struggled even with like our, our customers come in during the summer, not that all of them are eating with us. Um, most of them are not. They're just coming to buy produce from us, but like just being welcoming for people like that has, has really been new to me, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, and, but I do feel like that's where the Lord wants us. And like Adam says all the time, um, I don't think we're supposed to be comfortable. Like he, he tells me that when I'm like, I just want comfort. I just want comfort. Yes. <laughs> no, I completely agree with that. And that has definitely been something this last year that I felt of like, yeah, maybe we're not supposed to be comfortable <laughs> at all because you don't grow in comfort. Mm -hmm. You grow when you're out of your comfort zone. And uh, going back to you feeling like you need to be prepared. That is something I have felt this year too, actually. And I have tried to, uh, change my shopping around just having things on hand that are quick and easy to throw together. Just so if somebody does happen to show up or need, or needs a meal, you know, say somebody has a baby or whatever, I'm not scrambling and stressed out at the last minute thinking, Oh, I got to go to the grocery store and I got to do this. Especially, you know, like you said earlier, like it's expensive to feed a lot of people. So we have a pretty tight grocery budget. So, you know, you kind of work around, you can't just go to the store and drop couple hundred bucks on one meal yeah. mm -hmm. so I have tried to make sure that our our pantry and our fridge is stocked with things that I can just throw together pretty quickly yeah that's a good idea I probably need to think more in those terms too mm -hmm. like I just don't plan very well anyways like Adam's always like wouldn't a meal plan help you <laughs> like not be stressed <laughs> you know and everything he's always trying to get me to be a little more prepared about meals and stuff but I'm just I don't know what my problem is I'm just kind of a fly by the seat of my pants most of the days I guess or I, I think I think like before I had the baby I was much more 
like, okay, we're going to eat these things. I even have a menu uh, thing on our wall right now that's got like what we're having each day. And I think we used to do that pretty well um, before the baby came. And then, you know, I love him so much, but he threw a little wrench in things. And yeah, babies like to do that. <laughs> yeah. And just, you know, it's, it's kind of like, I don't want to have these expectations and then they're not met. And then I'm frustrated mm -hmm. with, with whoever, you know? So, um, yeah, but I, I, I like what you're saying. I think that's a good idea just to, just to have ingredients on hand and cause we just, we cook like that anyways. We don't really follow recipes. Mm -hmm. We just throw things together. So that's, Mm -hmm. that's something we could definitely do yeah so. that's how it should be you should eat in season so it changes all mm -hmm. the time. yeah and my meals we have a whiteboard too and i put stuff on it it <laughs> drives my family nuts I, i've told them now i'm like it's more like guidelines it's like an outline of things that might happen this week but it's wednesday and i don't want to have beans and rice tonight so we're having something else so i'll put stuff on the whiteboard kind of like an outline for me of like okay, at the very least, we're going to have this and I can prepare the ingredients around for that. But then, you know, you get to Wednesday and you have leftovers in the fridge or, oh my gosh, I have that chicken stock in there that I forgot that I need to use up before it goes bad. And so I'll throw something else together, but it's there as an outline of possibilities. Yeah, that's good. That's a good thing. Like, and I need to do that more just having sort of like a routine and not a schedule, you know, kind of thing is just <laughs> having grace with everybody and yourself and, but just having some sort of a guideline for, for meals and that kind of thing would be really helpful. Mm -hmm. So do you have any questions or no, I don't think so. Wisdom to impart. I don't think so. <laughs> Anything else you want to say, Meg? Mm -mm. Um, I don't think so. I mean, I always want to be an encouragement to people to not only like be concerned about where their food comes from and what they're putting into their bodies, but also making a space for table time. And particularly for us, um, one thing, I mean, y'all kind of know that we've had marital struggles in the past and we've touched on it on our, our YouTube channel. But I think one of the things that kept us grounded was we always had dinner at the table every night. There was no, even when Ben was working, he would try to get home, you know, during those dinner hours when he had lunch break, he was thankfully close enough that he could come home mm -hmm. for dinner. And it has been so, so important, not only for our relationship merely, but for our relationship with our kids. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have a pretty good relationship with our kids. And I think a lot of that is because we do have, have meals at the table every night. And it doesn't have to be fancy. I mean, like we were talking earlier, it can be pretty simple. It can be quesadillas <laughs> with chicken. <laughs> but having that fellowship time is really important. So that is something we always want to encourage everybody. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. We, and um, did you grow up having family meals at the time? No. Well, I no. Didn't he did. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't. And so like whenever I would, when we, when we were dating and I would come over and have like Sunday meal with them or whatever, it was so foreign to me to sit around the table together like that. Um, and I don't know. I mean, we did occasionally when um, my grandparents were alive and they, my grandma would cook for us and we would come over there and eat. We would eat around the table. But as far as at home, we just really didn't. We would go in our separate room or, you know, go watch TV or whatever. Mm -hmm. or, you know, it wasn't like something that was really important. And so um, I, I love that. And I, we've continued that with our kids too. It's been a little hard lately. We were just talking last night, you know, just um, we have these cows now. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've had a cow for a while, but now we have three. And so, oh. the, you know, the milking twice a day and all of the, you know, processing the, you know, bottling and all that kind of stuff takes a while and I mean our chore time has like mm -hmm. exponentially grown over the last few weeks mm -hmm. and um so it, it has been a little more difficult to have meals together yeah and, which is crazy because people are like you know he's home now what would be the problem with having meals together but it's it's a lot harder than mm -hmm. I mean it takes some planning definitely yeah. and maybe having to stop what you're doing um yeah to do it so yeah, it has been challenging. I, I've had to get used to making sure I stop at a certain time during the day. Whatever project I'm working on, and you know, I need to go take care of these chores. 
Otherwise, it's nine o'clock, you know, before I get to come in. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. And we uh, we sat down to eat at 6.30 last night. Mm-hmm. And because you milked late, right? Yeah, after. Yeah. Afterwards. So he, he milked after we ate supper. And Sydney, we were sitting there and Sydney said, I can't believe we're eating supper at 6.30. It's usually yeah. like 8.30, you yeah. know. And um, that's just, we've been doing, we've been mm-hmm. trying to wait on him to get done with everything. So it's. It's mm-hmm. challenging sometimes, but I agree. It's it's very important to be sitting at the table and, and having good conversations with each other and mm-hmm. talking about our days and what are they what are they struggling with? And we have a lot of faith talks when we're all around the table and, and yeah. stuff. So and it teaches kids discipline, you know, because they they just want to get back up and go back outside and run off, you know. But yeah, uh, yeah, no, yeah. And table are, manners are a good thing too. Yeah. <laughs> We eat and we clean up together and we, you know, we do all this together and then we go, you know, do what you want to do. Right. Right. Yeah. I agree. Well, thank you so much for um, chatting with us today. Um, We, I I miss you and I like seeing your face. So I I miss you too. I was like, I'm just going to go hang out with Michelle for an hour. (laughs) (laughs) And that was so cute. She texted me last night and said her kids got excited because they thought we were coming there to, um, yes, they were bummed. I know that's my kids are the same way. So, um, we'll have to, we'll have to get together in person soon. So, but, uh, thank you so much for doing this interview with us and, um, sharing with us about, about what it means. And, um, so if anyone wants to like follow you guys, where do they need to go? Uh, we are the Holler Homestead on YouTube and then on Instagram, it's just at Holler Homestead. Um, we have a Facebook page too, but I actually have not been on Facebook since the world went crazy. So <laughs> <laughs> Instagram is a better place. Uh, I agree with that. <laughs> Instagram just seems to be a little friendlier of a place most days. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. It's kind of, you know, going downhill as well. I think as mm-hmm. you know, many things are, but that's okay. Oh yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. We'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. Bye.